going on guys it is a fine fine super fine day here in southwest pa and in today's episode uh i have a subscriber who asked me to look over a set of bikes and to kind of give my opinion on which one is the better of the beginner bikes or maybe they just want a second opinion but i want to start off by saying this video is not meant to sway any specific direction of any specific motorcycle um the purpose of this video is to just present information and ideas and concepts that you can dear that you can take with you and whenever we get into the second part of the video so again it's not to sway a direction it's just to give you information and ideas to think about and the first thing to really think about when you're choosing your first bike is finances now uh you might think well why is finances so important and why should that be a deciding factor because at the end of the day if you can't afford the bike what does it matter anyways so uh really understand your finances motorcycles are expensive uh while looking over the the prices and doing all this research my bike right now is like eight hundred dollars more than it was last year whenever i bought the bike uh so prices are going up and not to mention there's not just the price of the bike there's taxes titles freight tri uh, freight assembly charges there's dealer charges there's a uh, state tax there's a lot of stuff so it adds up very quickly not including gear and insurance depending on what kind of bike you get uh insurance can vary dramatically so really understand your finances um i'm not going to give any finances this looks pretty i'm not going to give any finance um information or advice but at the end of the day you really shouldn't finance a toy i did everybody else does so it's like take that with a grain of salt but what i'm getting at is you shouldn't put yourself in a financial deficit just for a toy um so you know a quick example i bought a brand new car whenever i was young and dumb and i had to work two jobs just to pay for the payment and the insurance that was stupid i ended up foregoing the vehicle uh the person who co-signed said that they would take over they never took over payments i got a repo it screwed everything up for me for a long period of time so just be very very uh, honest with yourself with your financial situation the second thing to really consider is where you will ride uh and this is a big one for the r3 and the ninja 400 which were two motorcycles on the list um if uh, because with those two bikes those are the only two bikes that you will quote unquote get bored of and i don't believe people get bored with these bikes i think they just got the wrong bike because like if you're riding like this like if this is your every day this isn't mine this is a part of mine but if this is your everyday situation you don't need anything higher than a r3 or a 400 that's just be honest with ourselves you're never going to use that power uh, you know you probably heard this phrase said before but it's a lot more fun to go fast on a slow bike than slow on a fast bike so if this is your riding situation overkill is overkill um but with the 400 and the r3 uh those motorcycles are uh those are the kind of bikes where people just get the wrong bike because they have interstates and they have highways and they have these major road networks where they really really have to get on they have to really whoa whoa whoa, whoa. <laughs> holy crap that is that is bumpy uh that's beautiful but those are those bikes there uh on interstates and highways can they do it yes but is it going to be that much fun and by fun i mean like safe you can't really have fun if you're worried about not going fast enough like if on interstates if the speed limit's 70 everyone's doing 85 that's uh this put a little spice into it i live in pa so i got a lot of sinuous hills and stuff like that so let's make it a blind morning where you can't see because the sun's in your eyes and you have to go like so those are the kind of situations that you really got to consider like would the r3 and a 400 be enough power 
in your situation like your riding conditions most of the time they're going to be but there are situations where they just wouldn't be um the next thing you got to do is just be honest with yourself like what kind of rider do you want to be uh and and that's why it's so important to to not necessarily demo bikes but to sit on a bunch of different bikes because i love my 650 the hell i'm back i love my 650 i bought it as a touring because i knew that's what i wanted to do but as soon as i sat on like a bmw r13 whatever it is and that super upright body position i know that my second motorcycle or technically my third motorcycle is going to be a let's hit this turn real quick while nobody's here that's i know for a fact that my uh second bike is, or third bike rather is going to be a 1000 versus it's it's this turn look 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 that was all right um so just sitting and riding those bikes i mean i would get this bike again but you know you you don't really know until you know so it, it would serve benefit to sit on a couple bikes and if you can test ride them kind of test ride them because a lot of your bikes that you have on your list they're all kind of the same bike in the sense like they're this kind of motorcycle but you never know you might get on one of these and three months four months down the road it's like man i really want to tour on this thing i should have got a versus or something like that you know so just just food for thought just something to think about the other thing you have to do is be honest about yourself as far as maturity goes Cody biker said something that made me respect him so much more as a rider i mean i've always held respect for him but he said something that was like yes this this is it and he was it was his last video he just made and he was talking about kind of why he got the 650 um and all that and he said that he knows his personality and with his personality if the ninja 650 is capped out at 120 mile an hour or that's the fastest the bike's going to go he's going to go 120 mile an hour if he gets some other kind of bike that's capped out at 180 my man's gonna use all 180 mile per hour like that's just his kind of personality and that's very honest and that's very good i'm going to i'm going to turn around actually because there's nothing up here nothing up there i can't really see i can back up we can back up and we'll practice our u-turn tight u-turn turn her head turn her head perfect but that that is very awesome to hear somebody say that because that that is being as honest with yourself as possible like you have to be honest with yourself like am i going to ride this bike every day uh am i going to ride this bike every other weekend am i going to maintain this bike like back to finances like bike maintenance is expensive and you know certain brands are more expensive and there's other topics that we're talking about in the second and third part of this video but those are uh Th those are things you have to really um really understand uh so i don't know i i just really like that and just just really be honest with yourself like are you going to maintain your bike are you going to just ride like an asshole like are you watching all these videos i mean look i've watched so many moto vlogs and i watched so many brand new moto vloggers this season dear that are no longer riding because they already wrecked their bike and i could tell that they were going to wreck their bike just by how they were riding you can tell how they were riding it's like yep that person's definitely going to um that person's definitely going to be wrecking their bike and unfortunately sure enough they did so you you have to really be uh be 100 percent with yourself really understand yourself but I'm going to get up here, we're going to go back in the lab, and I built an Excel spreadsheet, and we're going to kind of go over all the specs of this whole big list of bikes, plus two bikes that I put on the list that you didn't have, um, just because there's a lot of hype about them, you might already know what they are, so we'll just see what happens. So I'll be right back, we're going to go to the lab. Alright guys, we are back in the lab, and uh, here I just built a quick excel spreadsheet of um some motorcycles that they had on the list and uh two of them 
that I just kind of added because I thought that they were uh, worth mentioning. So on the list is a Yamaha R3, a Ninja 400, a CBR 500R, Ninja 650, Aprilia RS660, a GSX 8R, a Yamaha R7, Triumph Daytona 660, the Ninja 500, and the CF Moto 450SS. These two bikes, again, I just kind of added on because I thought they might be worth mentioning. Um, I categorized them into three groups. Uh, the green, I kind of categorized these bikes as all the same type of bike. Uh, the Ninja 650 and the GSX 8R, I would also kind of classify in the same bike. And then the RS660, the R7, and the Daytona, I would uh, put those in the next tier. So the green, I would say is like very, very, very good uh, beginner bikes. Um, same with the Ninja 650, just because I'm going to be biased towards it because this is the first motorcycle that I've ever been on. Uh, I'm lying, I did the MSF course, but this is my first motorcycle without growing up on clutches or dirt bikes or anything like that so uh but these are like kind of like all have like clip-ons in a sense so that's why i kind of connected the all the green ones is like the same bike because they all kind of got the there's lower cc's clip-on handlebars kind of getting you into a, a sport bike feel the ninja 650 and the the gsx 8r they are higher cc bikes but they are very positive neutral body position uh, meaning where the they have like actual handlebars i'm pretty sure the uh, gsx 8r has like regular handlebars and not like clip-ons I, I i sat on a friends at a at a, a an event and I'm, I'm pretty sure it had like kind of regular handlebars because i sat on i was like oh wow this is very nice that's a very nice bike this gsx 8r that's a very nice bike um and then the third tier the uh aprilia rs660 the yamaha r7 and the triumph daytona 660 uh i kind of put those into like the next tier where they are very aggressive i mean we're talking 100 horsepower 72 horsepower and 93 horsepower high in the rev range these are kind of in the low rev range um i'm actually not entirely sure where their tachometer limits out um and the the uh the horsepower or that rather i'm excuse me the the torque is also kind of in there which is kind of interesting whenever i see this and i look at my ninja 650 and i see it's uh its torque is 50 and it's kind of up there with the daytona and all that but it has nowhere near the horsepower uh kind of a good way to think of the difference between horsepower and torque horsepower is how fast you can go torque is how fast you can get to how fast you can go so it's it's an acceleration thing so um yeah just uh just kind of food for thought but one of the first things uh that i talked about in the first part of the video was pricing and you know pricing can get very expensive i mentioned that the uh the 650 or the the 650 whenever i was buying it i think msrp was like seven nine or something and this gave me a bunch of different prices all the way up to like eight seven eight six whenever you start getting into the krt the se edition uh stuff like that it seems like kawasaki really gets you on um a, a wide variety of packaging which is very nice they don't just have like the 650 they got different levels of the 650 but you know you're you're talking this aprilia at 11.5 i mean if my bike was like 7.9 msrp after taxes pennsylvania has seven percent taxes and then titles transfer fees um there's freight there's assembly charges all of that came out to about 11 grand 10 grand 10.5 it was something in there so this uh aprilia at 11.5 
depending on what state you live in and all that, it's going to rack up to probably 16, maybe $15,000, $16,000. It all depends. I mean, you know, Pennsylvania is like uh, 7% tax, so that's just rounded up to 10. So that's $1,100 taxes just for that minus $200 or whatever. And then that'll kind of give you the estimate. Then you got all the other fees. So, you know, whenever you're looking at like price wise, you know, the, the Ninja 500 comes in at relatively low, 5.2. And again, they had prices ranging from like 5.1 to like five six all depending on the krt the se edition and um things like that the r3 came in at five four it had a little bit of range and the ninja 400 uh at five three uh, again with kawasaki this was like kind of like their mid to medium pricing they had other editions which was like five five or something like that and something to bring up I know uh, at least I'm pretty sure that the R3 is discontinued and the 400 is about to be discontinued because now they got the Ninja 500 um, because these are Japanese bikes I would not worry about that because I know that the 500 and the 400 pretty much have like the same parts they just up the engine so like finding parts and certain things wouldn't be an issue uh with the r3 because these bikes are there's so many of them i don't think you ever really have to worry about you know finding parts and they probably use a lot of the same parts in these other motorcycles um so yeah this is um this is this is oh don't do that this is a uh, just kind of like the price thing and then you know whenever we start getting into like the cbr 500r it's seven three now it's a honda i know honda has honda reliability so you know that's probably why it is um as as expensive as it is this this just depends on your financial stability you know, this is why I was saying I'm not swaying anybody a specific way because it's so um, it's it's so diverse in the, in the sense that everybody's finances are different. Seven grand might be not a lot to you, but it's a lot to me. So, you know, kind of kind of think about that. Uh, you know, the the R7 and the Daytona, those are all you know getting close to ten grand. The GSX 8R is expensive. I believe it was it was 100% Cloudy Biker who was looking at uh, one, and I think his post said out the door they said 14,000. Um, I'm pretty sure he resides in New York State, so New York probably has ridiculous taxes as far as as well as ridiculous insurance and all that. Um, and that's another thing as far as price goes as insurance goes this daytona this r7 this rs660 are probably going to have super high rates for insurance just because of what they are and what they're made to be i mean this daytona is a 600 cc inline three cranking out uh, 93 0.6 horsepower at 11,000 rpms with 50 foot pounds of torque 51 foot pounds of torque at 8.2 um so it, it's a fast bike the r7 is a tr nice track bike this is a beautiful bike um but i guarantee it's going to be super super expensive as far as taxes and this r660 bikes like the r3 the 400 the cf moto those are going to be relatively cheap, cheaper. Again, this all depends on your driving history and it all depends on your state. Um, not, not, it's, it's funny, I'm not picking on Cloudy Biker or I don't mean to bring him up a lot, but he was talking about his insurance for a 650 was like insane. And at the time when I bought mine, mine was $72 and his was a lot more than $72. I'm like, that's wild. So state to state varies tremendously. Um, so really consider that. 
The next thing to kind of consider is your your seat height. So I have a Ninja 650 and I can completely flat foot it. Um, I have no issues. I'm like six foot. I don't 511 is what my driver's license say. I don't know my inseam, but I can completely flat foot this motorcycle. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the uh, what the height is of the um, uh, the 636. That's this looked up. 636 height is what 32.7. So when I sat on uh, the the um, the uh, six six hundred the six three six Kawasaki, it's it sits high, like as an arch, like the the seat sits higher and back. It's kind of hard for me. It puts you leaned over, is what I'm trying to say. It's the seats real high, the clip ons are real low. It's super aggressive, and at uh at that height of um. Uh, was it? No, I just want to see how. Yeah, of, of 33 inches, uh, I could not flat foot the bike. I don't necessarily think that is um, a problem if you are comfortable and know yourself and where you're at with how you uh, learn things and you know your your riding past. Again, if you if you grew up on like dirt bikes and things like that stuff where it was higher, it probably wouldn't be an issue to you. Uh, I automatically canceled out the Kawasaki Versys 650 when I was looking for my bike because um, I didn't want to have to deal with uh, tiptoeing or anything like that. Uh, but the my 650 is 31 inches. It's very comfortable. I don't see like this being insane. Insane. It does have clip-ons and. And just, uh, you know, whoever is looking at these bikes, do your research. And because I, I don't know too, too much about them. Like I know by pictures of what I see and I see where the clip ons are. I see where the foot pegs are and I'm kind of gauging it like that. Um, but seat height, you know, there's all of these are pretty much the same and it really shouldn't be like. A make or break for you unless you're like very very short then it might be an issue the other thing that you probably shouldn't really worry about is weight only because again when I sat on my 650 I thought that was the biggest bike in the world I thought that bike was so freaking heavy and I got used to it in like 15 minutes it's it's not a big deal it's just taunting at first especially if you come in so vanilla and have no experience with any other kind of motorcycles which was my situation so my bike felt really heavy at 423 pounds wet so that's all fluids and gas and all that but it's it feels like such a super light bike to me um but some of these other bikes like what's the heaviest bike is this gsx 8r at 450 pounds you know um it sits a little bit higher as well so you know think of maybe a heavier bike and you might be tiptoeing a little bit um so that's that's kind of kind of where i was at with height and seat um, same thing with ergonomics. I'm only going by what I've ridden and what I'm picking up. Um, I have the Ninja 650 at relaxed and I have the JSX 8R at relaxed and looking at pictures and everything else of the CF Moto and I actually did do research on this bike because I was really interested in this company. Uh, very relaxed and when I say relaxed, I mean relaxed in this, um, I mean relaxed in this genre of motorcycles because all of these bikes are kind of like the same thing. They're, they're not super sports. They're kind of sports bike, little bit of sports touring. Maybe it could be argued that the uh, RS660 and the Daytona are super sports, whatever but 
these bikes here, the 650 and the GSX-8R, both have uh, like up handlebars where they're not clip-ons. The R3, 400, CBR, 500R, uh, the Daytona, the 500, they all have clip-ons. And what I was getting at before, and I, I, I forgot my train of thought, believe it or not, was after riding a lot of other bikes for my um, for my uh, demo day, and I got back on my, my bike, and I always thought my bike was super upright body position, I sat on it, I'm like, oh, this actually is kind of forward leaning. So when I say relaxed, I mean in this kind of genre of bike. Uh, the RS660, I would probably say it's aggressive to semi-aggressive. It looks like the foot pegs are back, it's a racing bike. I mean, it's Aprilia, it's Italian, 100, harp, 100 horsepower, high in the rev range at 10.5. The torque's a little weird at 49 at 8.5, but you know, uh, it is it is kind of what it is. Maybe it's a lighter bike. Oh yeah, look, it is a lighter bike. So, you know, the, the uh, weight to power ratio would be a lot better for this bike rather than uh, this compared to the GSX, 8R where it has 57 but it weighs uh, almost 50 pounds more so even though this bike might have more torque this bike might be faster off the line so just kind of things to consider um, I don't really want to make this video this part of the video too too long but you know this is kind of just the the breakdown of all these bikes you know you have the R3 it's a twin 321 cc's horsepower 42 torque 29 it's kind of heavy uh it's you know it's it's heavier than a 400 which i thought was interesting um seat heights just a little bit lower price just a little bit more than the 400 and uh yeah i i guess the um the only bikes that i would stay away from if I was in that position and I had all this information presented to me, I would stay away from the red. I would stay away from this bike, this bike, and this bike. Um, it's it, a big part of it is going to be the price. I mean, nine grand, nine grand, uh, nine grand, the, this R6 or uh, this uh, RS6 at 11.5. No, that's, that's way too much for me. I'm, I, I cannot do that um, so yeah this is uh that's that's kind of where I'm at I would and take this with a grain of salt this is what I would do this is not what I'm telling you to do what I would do is I would stay away from these bikes because of the price the insurance is going to be ridiculous on these bikes too um, and please anybody in the comments that has these bikes or knows anything about them and you want to share information a story or anything like that uh, I would really appreciate that that would help this person out tremendously getting a first person view on this on these uh, motorcycles um, again the R3 and the the 400 those are the only bikes again where you would get them and quote unquote get bored because you just got the wrong motorcycle because of where you ride at uh, if you have only farmland small twisty tight turns and you don't have much going on these would be a perfect bike they're going to be nice and cheap great bike for a beginner overall fantastic bike for me where i live um the uh the 650 was perfect it came in at a reasonable price point where i could afford it uh, i knew it had the power and the torque that I needed to get me up to speed fast. Um, the the CBR 500R is not a bad bike either. Um, it's it's it would just have to be something that you would have to consider. Like you know, if if the CBR is 73, and this again, these are very generalized numbers. If the CBR is five uh, 7300 dollars but it's only a 500 cc maybe 43 horsepower 29 foot pounds of torque and then if you want something just a little bit stronger 
you could just jump to a 650 and just pay a little bit more i mean it's it's, it's all on what you want or let's compare better yet the cbr 500 to the ninja 500 if the cbr comes in at 73 and the ninja 500 comes at 52 that's that's a pretty substantial difference and for horsepower versus torque 43 and 51 29 and 31 uh 421 pounds and 373 pounds so the ninja 650 probably is just going to be generally quicker if you know just you know if that's what you're you know kind of how you're reading this or whatever but um i'm going to get off here uh i might do another part of the video where it's just like one final little breakdown um if not i will see you guys later but i think i am just gonna uh do one more wrap around and then uh call it a video